Multiple regression is arguably the single most important method in all statistics. Regression methods are widely used in many disciplines. In addition, a good understanding of regression is all but essential for understanding many other, more sophisticated statistical methods. This set of videos will work through the entire process of model building and assessment. This first video will use a subset of the 2005 Used GM Cars data set found in the Practicing Statistics textbook to introduce you to some of the key statistics used to assess a regression model. Before we do any analysis, it's important to recognize that multiple regression can serve multiple goals. And the goals you have for your statistical analysis will determine the type of regression analysis that you do. A statistical model can be used to describe a relationship between multiple explanatory variables and the response variable. It can also be used to predict new variables. However, just as in simple linear regression, caution should be used when the explanatory variables are outside the range of the sample data. Finally, multiple regression can be used to test hypotheses. For example, in our data set, we could ask the question, is mileage useful in predicting retail price? Or we could test a theory saying, Cars with lower mileage are worth more. When we conduct a hypothesis test in regression, we are really determining whether an association between the explanatory variables and the response variables could be due to chance. So here we're going to start with a simple linear regression model. We're using mileage of the car to predict price. We do see a trend that when mileage increases, price does decrease. However, notice that the slope coefficient, B1, equals negative 0.22. This seems rather small. In essence, we can interpret the slope coefficient as saying, when the mileage of the car increases by one, we expect the retail price to go down by 22 cents. That might seem relatively unimportant. However, we have a T statistic and a P value that says slope is significant. It's important to consider scale when looking at the magnitude of the slope coefficient. If we talk about a car that has 40,000 miles versus a car that has 10,000 miles, the expected change in retail price is rather large. We do see by the test statistic and p-value that mileage is an important explanatory variable. There is a relationship between mileage and price. However, if you look at the r-squared value, we see that 4.1% is very low. We would like something much closer to 100%. This tells us that using mileage as the only explanatory variable may give us a predicted price that is very different than the actual retail price. So let's talk a little bit about what the r-squared value is actually telling us. Here we have an even smaller subset of the data in order to better see individual points. We have generated a simple linear regression model, which is y hat equals 15,244 minus 0.111 mileage. We've highlighted one particular data point that has the x value of 11,488, and a price of 14,678.1. This observed price for this particular car is our yi value, our observed data point. We also have y hat i, which is our predicted value for this given mileage. So when we plug in 11,488 into our regression model, we get an expected value that falls right on the regression line. Finally, we also have a Y bar value. The average price of all the cars in this subset of data is 12,962. Our R squared value is based on calculating the squared differences between these three different Y values. The sum of squares residuals is the squared difference between every single observed value and predicted value. The regression sum of squares is the sum of the squared distances between the regression line and the overall mean for each individual point. And the total sum of squares is the sum of the squared distances between the observed values and the overall mean. It's not immediately obvious that the residual sum of squares plus the regression sum of squares will add to the total sum of squares, but the proof isn't that difficult, and we'll leave that for outside reading. So the formula for R squared is the sum of squared values measuring the distance from the regression line and the overall mean compared to the sum of the squared distances measuring how far every single point is from the overall mean. We often write it 1 minus the sum of a measure of how far each point is from the regression line 
compared to a measure of how far each point is from the overall mean. So in order to understand what's happening when we're doing this calculation, let's look at this particular point. If this point actually fell on the regression line, the difference between y and y hat would be zero. Now let's consider all data points. If all of our observed data points actually fell upon the regression line, we would get an r-squared value of 1. In general, when our observed points are very close to the predicted regression line compared to the overall mean, we are going to get an r-squared close to 1. So the second question that we should ask is what happens to r-squared when there really is no difference between the y-hat and the y-bar? In other words, when the distance between an observed value and the predicted regression line is essentially the same as the distance between the observed values and the overall mean, then the sum of y minus y hat squared is essentially the same as the sum of the y i minus y bar squareds. So when the regression line is not much better than the overall mean in giving us an estimate for retail price, we will get an r squared close to zero. r squared is often called the coefficient of determination, and as we described, it is the percentage of variation in the response that is explained by the regression line. So when we have a high r-squared value, close to 1 or 100%, our model tends to be good for predicting new values. One key issue in using r-squared to evaluate a model is that whenever you add a new term to r-squared, r-squared only goes up. Sometimes it's difficult to know exactly how much r-squared should improve when we're trying to decide whether new terms should be added to the model. One way to address this is to use the adjusted r-squared value. The adjusted r-squared calculation looks a lot like the standard r-squared calculation, except it has this one additional term of n minus 1 divided by n minus p, where n is the sample size and p is the number of coefficients. The adjusted r-squared adds a penalty when more terms are included in the regression model. So when there are many terms in your model, we have a larger p, then n minus 1 divided by n minus p tends to be a larger value. Thus, the adjusted r-squared value is smaller. So one approach to determining whether more terms should be added into a regression model is to decide that we will continue adding terms until the adjusted r-squared starts to decrease. So going back to our original data set, we see that while the regression line is decreasing, increasing mileage will tend to decrease price we also see that the points are so far away from the regression line, we get a fairly low r-squared value, meaning that this model would not be very effective in predicting retail price.